this morning I'm going to show you how to run diagnostic systems on the Aprilia Dorsa Duro and I believe the Aprilia Shiva as well. Um, now this is for the 750 models, obviously they, they did do a 1200 Dorsa Duro but this, um, I only know this to work on the 750s. Um, I believe the 1200s use a different ECU and this method might not work. Now. Before you get started on diagnosing your bike, if you've got faults or if you just want to check if there's any fault codes there, you do need a few items up from the internet. Now, I'll show you where to get these items. I'll post a couple of links, but they are quite specific, so listen carefully. First item you're going to need that can be bought from Amazon is this little cable. Now, this is a Fiat 3-pin to OBD2 reader, sorry, adapter. Now, this also has two little crocodile clips on it, and these go on your battery. It will not work if you don't have these clips, but I've not seen one of these adapters that doesn't, so hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a worry. Now, I think I paid about £5 for this on Amazon, and I got free next day delivery through Amazon Prime. Um, you can't really go wrong with this one, as long as it's got the 3-pin and an OBD2, and the two crocodile clips. Now the next one is a little bit more important and a little bit more specific. Now this is your USB to OBD2 adapter. Now this is what you're actually going to plug into your computer and this will read the codes off the bike. Now the important thing about this is there's two different types. There is one that uses a CH340 chipset and there is one that uses an FTDI chipset. Now we need the one with the FTDI chipset. Um, now you need to make sure you get that because I went wrong there and the CH341 does not work. Um, so you're going to have to be careful when you order it. Make sure it says that it's the FTDI version. Um, so if you just search on eBay or Amazon, you can search for OBT2, OBD2 FTDI and you should be able to find one there. Um, like I say, I'll post a link to where I got this. Um, this also came with a disc that has um, the Tune ECU software that works on some Triumph and Aprilia models. I don't think it actually works on our bikes though. Also comes with a set of VCDS Lite software, which is for VW and Audi cars. Um, so if you've got a VW Audi as your daily driver or anything, you can also use that to diagnose faults there. So make sure it's got the FTDI. Now the next thing you're going to need is a laptop. You're going to need this so you can actually read the codes. Um, the software that we're going to be using does not have an Android version. I've yet to find any Android or iPhone versions that work with our bikes. So you're going to need a laptop to plug into your bike. Um, and I'll show you where to get the software as well. Okay, so there's two pieces of software that we need first. The first of all is the FTDI drivers for your laptop. Um, these can be downloaded straight from the FTDI site or they can be found on, well to be honest my computer found them all likely. So yours might do the same. Now I'm running Windows 10 and I did get a little warning from the diagnostic software that it wasn't going to work, but my computer ran it in compatibility mode automatically and it did then work. I'm just going to adjust the camera a little, I'm sorry for the, the jerkiness of this. So I'm next going to navigate to where we can get the software. It's this little piece of kit here, which is Guzzy Diag. Now I've already got it on my computer, but I'll show you how to get to where we want to be. As soon as my computer wakes up, it's obviously as slow as me this morning. Um, it's quite early. Okay, so all we're going to do, we're going to go into a Google search, and we're going to search for Guzzy Diag. So as you can see there, I've already searched for it, so it's found it straight away. So this first website, which is a German site, von der Salierberg.de, download Guzzy Diag. We're going to go onto that website. Now, straight away we get a warning here, and this is to say that this software is not for sale, it is a free bit of software. 
if you find an advert on eBay, you're only paying for hardware, and 49 euros for the hardware is too expensive. As I say, I spent, I spent about 15 pounds on my cable, if that. So then we're going to search. We're going to scroll down a little, and I'm going to use the Windows file. We need to use this Guzzi Diag V0.47. So there's a few different options there. You've got a Windows one, a Linux x86, a Linux x64, and a Mac OS X cable. Uh, sorry, software. So obviously I'm going to use the Windows, but I've already got it downloaded. So there's all your links there. You just click the link, it downloads a zip file. In fact, I'll do it again just to show you. So you can see it's downloaded a zip file down here. All The only file in there is the actual .exe file, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, if your laptop doesn't automatically find the FTDI drivers, you then need to search for the FTDI driver. So if you do a Google search for FTDI driver, you straight away get this ftdichip.com forward slash ftdrivers. We're going to go onto there and we want the VCP drivers at the left hand side because that is a virtual COM port which our USB device uses. We're then going to scroll down and we want to find our version. So for mine, it's Windows 64 bit. As you go over these versions, it's going to give you a hyperlink. You click that, it downloads it, you install it. Dead easy. So back to Guzzi Diag. Now the first thing the Guzzi Diag website tells us to do is check that the COM port is correct. There's also a link on the, FT, on the Guzzi Diag page for the FTDI drivers. So we're going to scroll down and this is for the settings in Windows. Now to bring these settings up, you might need to plug your OBD2 cable in. For some reason, my ports option didn't come up until that was plugged in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug that into a USB port on our laptop. Nice little alert to tell me that mine's plugged in. And then we're going to go to our device manager. Now, easiest way to do this on your Windows PC is the Windows button and X at the same time and then hit M for manager. Give it a couple of seconds and we get this device manager screen. Now down here, we should have an option for ports. That is because we've now got a virtual COM port through our USB. And we can see there that mine is connected to COM3. We're going to go ahead and right click and go to properties. Now you've got these COM3 properties here. We're then going to go to port settings and as per the Guzzi Diag page, we're going to leave this lot as it is. We're then going to go to advanced. Now this took me a little bit of time to get my head around because my screen is a little bit different to the Guzzi Diag page. But all I'm going to do for now is change this latency timer msec to 1. I'm not entirely sure why this is done but that is what the website tells us to do. With that all set up we can then close the device manager and as long as the FTDI chip is installed we can go ahead and click to my bike. Okay, so we're over here at my bike. Now, first thing you need to do is take your seat off. So that's dead easy if you haven't already done that, but I assume everyone will have done it at some point. So you've got a key, sw key switch underneath your seat. Now the next thing you need to do is take this piece out. Now this piece here has two Allen screws, or in my case one because one is missing, and a little popper at the back that holds your toolkit strap in. Now I bought this bike second hand and there wasn't a toolkit there and there was a few little bolts missing. But you just need to be careful of these wires. You don't really want to disconnect these as these are the tilt switch for the bike. You don't really want to fuck with that. Sorry for the language. So we're just going to go ahead and move this out of the way. Next thing you're going to do is grab hold of your battery 
and just move it up over so it's a little bit easier to get to. They're a little bit awkwardly angled, so we're just going to pull it out a bit so it's a bit easier to get access to. Now, the next thing we're going to do, just down the side of your battery, you're going to see a little connector that's got a black, black plastic cover over it. We're going to pull the tab back and remove the cover from the plug. This is our di diagnostics part that we're going to plug our Fiat cable into. So check your connections are the right way around and just slot the Fiat connector over the top till you get a nice click as it enters the locking mechanism. Now from there, we're going to go ahead and connect the negative terminal to the battery. Now the clips I've got on this cable are a little bit naff, they're not very strong. So you've got to make sure you've got a nice good connection and it's not just going to ping off, which this one looks like it might. I'm then going to go ahead and connect the positive side in the exact same fashion and hope we've got a nice, easy, good connection. From there, we can take the OBD2 cable that's plugged into our computer and connect it to the end of here. Just slots in nicely and with this cable we've got a nice red light to show us that we are fully connected again. Now back over to our laptop. I do apologise if this bit of the video is a little bit shaky. I'm going to have to do this freehand because I can't get my tripod in and use my laptop at the same time here. Now we're going to go away from that. And we're going to navigate to the folder that we downloaded the Guzzy Diag software to. So in mine it's just nice and easy in our downloads folder. As you can see, there is already an old version of the file there. I'm going to use this one because I know the download was good. We're going to open up our WinRAR or Zip Extractor, whatever you have installed on your computer. If you haven't got that, then search for WinRAR and get a free download on that. Now we're going to go straight ahead and open this guzzydiag.exe which as you can see there is saying it's an application. It's going to do a little extraction and then with a bit of luck we're going to get this screen. Now this screen is the Guzzy Diag software. If you get this far you're doing great. You normally get a little th pop up that asks you to select your language and then select your information. Now because I didn't get that because I've used it before already I'm going to open up this Guzzy Diag settings. This is probably going to be the screen you see when you first fire it up. Okay now as you can see there we've got our lang language selection we've got a few different languages there. We know our COM port that's usually automatic and in our motorcycle section, we're going to select for our bikes the California 1400. Now this is because it doesn't actually have our bike, but the California 1400 uses the same ECU. Or a very similar one, and that works. So we're going to go ahead, click the California 1400. Now I don't know what's in the extras thing, but I've not used these, so it's just some debug logging. We don't need any of that for what we're going to do, so we're going to go away and click the X button. Now the next thing we're going to do, up here in File, we're going to hit Connect. Now your bike is still turned off at this point, but do so anyway. And we get this point here that says please switch on ignition, then press OK. So over at your bike, you're going to switch to your ignition and let it do its thing. Do not start the bike at this stage. I'm going to go back to Guzzy Diag, and as it asked, we're going to click OK. Now with a bit of luck, we're now going to get a connection, which we have. So you can see we've got these live information at the top. Now it's telling me the air temperature in here is 19 degrees. Now that's quite impressive. I believe that's because the bike's not running. Because it's stupidly early here, I can't see it being that temperature. Now. To get our diagnostics page up, it's dead easy. We're going to go to this view at the top here. We're going to click on that. And then in here, we're going to click on faults. So I'm going to do that. Now, you then get this screen. Now, as you can see, there's nothing on there at the moment. 
and that's because we haven't actually read the ECU yet. So we're going to fire away at this read button down here. Now on mine, I get this, no actual faults, no stored faults, and that is because I recently cleared my ECU already. You may get a few little codes. Now if you do, you're going to need to look online and have a look at what those codes are. But if you want to check that those codes are still coming up each time you ride the bike, you can clear the ECU using this clear button. Obviously it's not doing anything for me because I've got no codes there. But once you hit that clear button, you should end up with the exact same text that's on my screen. If you do that, you can then exit the software, that's the diagnostics done. You can then take your bike out for a spin, let it get up to temperature, have a ride, and then come back and do it again. See if you've got any new codes. I'll give a link to the text instructions that I've followed to learn this process, as it is quite helpful, and they also have a lot of the codes on there. The reason I did this video was just because I know some people prefer to watch someone do it and learn from that instead, but the topic I used on the Aprilia forum um, was very informative, so I'll give that as well and give credit for that. So have a look in the comments for some links to those. I hope this helped, and fingers crossed you can now solve the issues with your bike. Thank you.